Hi everyone, my name is Helen Dion. I am Marketing Manager for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Acumatica for e-commerce with new big commerce integration, presented by Seth from the SWK team and Josh from the Acumatica team. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone is placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your pod. It should be on the um, right hand corner of your screen. We are recording the presentation and we will be distribu distributing it to all attendees as well as absentees tomorrow. Uh, lastly, please take a moment at the end of the presentation to answer our short two question survey. So with that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you the software industry knowledge tools and support whenever you need it. So whether you're searching for the best ERP solution that fits your e-commerce needs or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar while we have some um, experts on the line with us. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Seth. Hey guys, this is Seth here, Seth Kuhn, a solution architect for uh, Acumat or at SWK for focusing on Acumatica. Can you guys hear me just uh, check? My yeah, we can hear you. Can hear you. Um, just make sure you make your presentation in full screen format. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so just a quick agenda. We do want to get right to it. I know, um, you know, sometimes these webinars can be kind of fluff, so I, I do want to get right into things. But uh, we're just going to go through some quick introductions and then talk a little bit about, you know, just the history of ERP and shopping carts. Um, discuss some of the business needs real quick, and then we'll get right to that, the Acumatica Big Commerce uh, Connector with uh, Josh. Um, so as I said, my name is Seth Kuhn. Uh, I organized this uh, webinar just because I uh, I know what Josh is doing uh, over at Acumatica, and I think it's uh, quite compelling, especially uh, being able to leverage Acumatica with uh, Big Commerce and um, the integration he's built out. Uh, but Josh, if do you just want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, sure. So um, first, thanks for having me today. My name is Josh Fisher. I'm the Senior Product Manager of the Commerce Edition over at Acumatica. I've been working in the e-commerce realm, especially the B2B e-commerce realm, for almost a decade now. And uh, what, you know, I, I'm really happy when I hear people like Seth say that they're compelled by what we're building because I'm very excited about it too. Looking forward to sharing it with you today. All right. Thanks, Josh. So, I did just want to discuss kind of the the state of affairs today. Um, you know, we you have shopping carts and ERP as we discussed in the description. You know, they, I said, you know, I wrote they meet and you know what do they do with each other and how can they be compatible? Um, and you know, the way I see it, I, I come from e-commerce before I got into ERP, and I really see that there's been an arms race um, over the past you know 10, 20 years. I can see a little cartoon here. It's like Lancelot starting an arms race with this Scud missile. And I put up some of the some of the people or some of the companies' uh, shopping carts that I feel like have really kind of um, you know gotten ahead of the competition through this arms race. And uh, so we've got Shopify up here, Big Commerce, Magento, and WooCommerce. Um, they've they've really kind of left the others behind um, from my perspective. Uh, you know, some WooCommerce is quite prolific because it's free. So, right, it's used all around the world, especially really small companies tend to start with WooCommerce. Uh, Shopify, based in uh, Canada, it, it's very slick tool, has uh, it's very user-friendly, and, and a lot of times companies will start there or migrate up to Shopify. And then BigCommerce really uh, meets the kind of mid-market, uh, which is partly why it's very fitting with, with Acumatica. You know, and then Magento is a very capable shopping cart, uh, very big and very configurable. Um, you know, so it's 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 come out ahead as well. Um, but as this arms race has been going on, uh, you know, ERP software has been kind of doing its own thing. 
and there are certain ERP companies like NetSuite or Epicor that have built their own shopping carts, you know, trying to add more feature functionality, uh, but they really haven't been going through this competition um, or this arms race um, to, to get to where these other shopping carts have, right? So the part of the idea with this big commerce connector is leverage best of breed uh, shopping cart instead of relying on your ERP provider to create a shopping cart that's that has everything you need it you need it to do so that's where we kind of are today um, and uh, you know I, I, th I think that you'll see that what again what Josh has done allows you to really you know leverage a really strong shopping cart as well as a very strong um, or strong cloud shopping cart as well as, as well as a very strong uh, cloud ERP system in Acumatica So some of the business needs that we, you know, that we see as we're um, working with companies, um, you know, you, of course, you want an online catalog in your shopping cart. It, you know, it serves that, that purpose of um, definitely you have images, multiple images. You want people to be able to see different features and things. You also want, you know, whether it's B2B and you have distributors or it's direct B2C, you want people to see pricing, quantity on hand. Uh, you also want to, of be able to get more customers and leverage Google and the internet to be able to allow customers to find you. So in choosing a shopping cart, you want one that, um, you know, is coded well to, to be received well by Google for, you know, SEO um, and also, you know, Google ads optimization. You want to, companies want to get more sales by, you know, by getting more customers, but also even leveraging your existing customer base to get more sales. And then we also see that, you know, the shopping cart can really be a tool for your sales team. Uh, you, and you're, you know, you can only take so many orders if your customer service reps have to do it over the phone or if they have to, you know, take orders through fax or email. Um, you know, being able to use a shopping cart where the orders are automatically go into your ERP system and are automatically fulfilled is a lot more scalable. Um, and then, of course, we have you, you know less labor as as we were just talking about. To, and you and you also don't want to have to maintain multiple databases, right? Uh, which is kind of a broken system to start. So these are the, some of the business needs, or some of the advantages to to leveraging a shopping cart, uh, strong integration to an ERP system. And uh, you know, with that said, I, I want to kick it over to Josh to get in there, and so you guys can see you know what Acumatic is doing with this uh, big commerce connector. Sure. Okay. Okay, you should be able to see my screen. We can. Okay, perfect. So what we're looking at here is the Acumatic ERP system. We're looking at a dashboard inside of the commerce area. Um, I'm also logged into the back end of a big commerce e-commerce site. So I'm logged in as an admin here. And then we also have a uh, demo e-commerce site, which is obviously the site that's connected to this ERP. Um, before I dive right into the integration, let me show you what we've built. So um, technically what we've built is it's a commerce connector. So internally at Acumatica, we talk about building a commerce enabled ERP system. And what we mean by that is we want to build an ERP that has all the tools necessary to run a web-based business. And if you, um, if you take a distri distribution company, for example, and you think about, this is, this is always the example that I turn to, in the distribution company, if you look at their inventory levels, or, it, or you look at their inventory level, um, all the inventory is in the ERP in the database is just uh, row after row after row of items, right? There's just one SKU for every individual item. But if you think about the act of buying a product on an e-commerce site, for instance, if you're buying a t-shirt on a website, um, the t-shirt is rendered to the customer is one page that contains maybe 10 or maybe 20 different SKUs. So, in order to be able to accomplish that, you have to have your one parent SKU, which is the T-shirt itself, and that's the, um, you know, that one design of the T-shirt, and then all the different colors and all the different sizes that are available in that T-shirt. Now, if you went with the original ERP distribution model, you'd end up with 20 different pages on your website that represented each of those different variants um, for the T-shirt. 
but that's not what a customer is looking for. So to build an optimal customer experience, you need to be able to show them uh, that one t-shirt page and all the different um, options that they have whenever they're adding that item to their cart, just so they can, they can have the tools to drill down to the exact SKU that they place in the cart. So when it ends up as a sales order in the ERP, that the, um, the order goes through with the correct item. Now an ERP, it doesn't understand, but naturally it's not gonna understand any of this parent-child relationships with the, the product with variants like t-shirts. So that's just one of the many things that we've been trying to accomplish inside of our ERP. We're building out tools that will allow our customers to sell online automatically. So, you know, um, Seth brought up the fact that you don't wanna do double entry in two different systems. You don't wanna be working with two different databases where you have to do work. And it's the same with things like the products. You don't wanna to have to structure products in your ERP and then also structure products outside an e-commerce site. Our ultimate goal is to be able to give you one ERP system where you can do, let's say 90% of your work, and then all of that work just pushes out to the e-commerce site. And that's, that's um, just one sliver of what we've accomplished with this connector. Now the connector itself um, allows you to pass data back and forth between your ERP and the e-commerce system. As you can see here, there's lots of different entities that are connected, uh, customers, customer location information, your stock items, uh, sales categories, um, sales orders. All of those different data points are flowing back and forth between the ERP and the e-commerce system. And what's nice about the system that we've built is we've put all the configuration tools in your hands. So as the customer, you can go through all of these different settings and all these different entities and you can control how that data is flowing back and forth um, between the two systems. Now, before I go any further, let's go ahead and jump into a demo, and I'll, and I'll uh, continue to push this uh, as we look at the demonstration. All right, so um, on the demo site, let's just go in and we'll look at a simple product and add this, let's look at this camera. So this is a, an example of a simple product. It's just one SKU, one price, one product. In this example, the title, the price, the uh, images, and the description, all of that information is actually housed inside of the ERP, and it gets exported to the e-commerce site. And in this case, there's just one um, SKU, so there's no selections like the T-shirt I mentioned earlier, so I can just add this item to my cart. Notice, too, um, I have my inventory levels are coming over. I use this item a lot when I'm demoing, so I have a lot of inventory for this camera, but the inventory levels are also coming over from the ERP. Now, if we go in and look at one of these laptops, so if I pull up this laptop, now this laptop is using that product with variance um, configuration that I mentioned earlier. So in this case, um, we're looking at a Dell Latitude laptop, but I'm going to choose the 500 gig hard drive and the 8 gig RAM. And notice that as I go through and choose these different options, my SKU is updating and the price of this product is updating. And that's, again, pulling all of this information directly from the ERP. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add this to my cart as well. The last thing I want to point out to you is I'm on this page right now, I'm looking at this product, um, but in this case, I'm a business customer. So I'm gonna log in with my business account and notice that the prices have changed. We can actually go back and look. Before, this camera was $14.99, and because of my customer-specific pricing, the pricing information has changed directly on the site. That's a really valuable tool, especially for B2B sellers, to be able to configure your customer-specific pricing in the ERP, export that to the e-commerce site, and then as soon as your customers log in, whatever negotiated rates that they, that they have, they'll be able to see right on the website. And you can do things like uh, cross out the regular price and just show them their sale price, or um, there's lots of different ways that you can drive this experience home with the customers, but just the ability to, 
do that is really important um, from our experience. Okay, so I've added these items to my cart. Let's go through the process of checking out. Now, check out, the actual process is similar to you know any other time that you've checked out on a website. Um, but what's nice is that because I've logged in with an account that resides inside the ERP, the ERP has a lot of information about me that it's sent to the e-commerce system. For example, um, I may have, you know, especially if I'm a business account, I may have multiple shipping addresses. Maybe I'm shipping to different retail stores or I have different locations that I ship items to. All of the customer locations that are in the ERP get exported to my customer record inside the e-commerce site. So all those addresses become available to me here. Additionally, if I were to either go to my My Account area and add a new address, or if I added a new address here, it would be sent back to the ERP and saved um, along with my customer record. In this case, I'm just gonna say that my billing address is the same as my shipping address. Obviously, I could change that if I wanted to. Here in the shipping area, um, I have this configured right now just for demo purposes with just flat fee shipping. There's lots of different ways that companies handle shipping. Um, we've talked to you know, every, everything from customers that uh, just do free shipping for everything that they sell, clear through companies that have to organize containers because they're uh, shipping so many products. Uh, luckily, we have integrations with um, organizations externally that will handle shipping. Um, some customers, they handle their own shipping and they'll just set up very simple shipping rules for their e-commerce system. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do here. But the, the main point that I want to make is in this case, if I'm going to choose this $7 shipping, it will save $7 on the sales order inside the ERP, but the shipping can be handled separately once we get inside the ERP. For instance, um, let's say I add the $7 shipping and inside the ERP, the ERP manager is processing the order and that's when they use a tool to calculate the shipping and they find that either the shipping is less than $7 or maybe it's more than $7, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't, it shouldn't impact the customer and their experience. Now that could change if you wanted it to. Maybe here you would collect $7 and if there was a savings, you would pass it on to the customer. That's just a configuration change that will go through during the implementation process. But um, sometimes customers like to charge less for shipping than what they're paying. They have lots of different strategies. So in this case, I'm just gonna choose $7. We're gonna continue on. Now, when we get to the billing, um, I only have the test gateway set up. This is just the stock big commerce test gateway. Um, but just like with shipping, there's lots of different ways that you can handle your payment. Um, in this case, we're collecting money via credit card. It's just a test credit card. Um, and in this case, we're going to be authorizing and capturing the money on the big commerce system. Um, but let's say, for instance, that you needed to authorize your payments on big commerce and capture inside the ERP. That's not a problem. It's just a configuration set up um, uh, during the implementation process. Or maybe you want to pass net 30 terms on to your customers who are checking out on the site. Or maybe you want them to have COD. Maybe you want the, um, the customer to come pick up the products at your warehouse and they'll pay you whenever they get to the warehouse. All of those options are available to you. Um, it, like I said, it's just a simple configuration during the, um, during the implementation process. So we're going to go ahead and place the order. Now, um, the integration is set up to use webhooks, um, which uh, rely on push notifications in order to, for the two systems to communicate with each other. Okay, so an, a less techy way of saying that is that as soon as I submit the order on Big Commerce, it sends a signal to the ERP that says, hey, something happened here, you know, come grab this information. So when we go back into the commerce area, of the uh, ERP, if we go in and look at our sync status, I'm just gonna pull up the sales orders here. Notice that it recognizes that there's a pending sales order right now. 
um, this is the sales order that I just submitted. So all of this is actually happening in real time. And if I gave it a little bit more time, it would, it would go ahead and sync automatically. I'm going to push it through. You can set up all of those fields of data, the ones that I showed you earlier, customers, customer location, uh, stock items, sales orders. You can set them up so that they will uh, transfer data in real time. You can set them up so you, it has to be manual. Maybe you manually have to come in and uh, process the information, or you can set it up on a schedule, like once an hour or once every 24 hours. Um, different businesses have different needs. And um, again, all of those are just configurations um, with the Commerce Edition. The, 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 one, the one point that I keep making there about the configurations is that most integrations between two large systems require a developer to make those kinds of configuration changes. And that's really something we wanted to get away from. And what we found in talking with customers about um, the Commerce Edition and what we were building is the people that were making decisions about how data would flow and um, the, the configuration decisions, they were not the developers. They weren't people that had a background in building API integrations. So what we realized in order to give the tools to the right people, we were gonna have to build a system that would make it easier for anyone with a minor technology background, um, someone that is working with an ERP and understands the business flows, give them the tools to be able to uh, control the data. And fortunately, that's what we've done. Okay, so this sales order is now synchronized. We can go in, pull up our sales orders now. You see the open sales order that just came through. We open this up. Now, every business handles their sales orders a little bit differently. Um, um, so I won't dive into the details here, but what's important to me is that information lands in this sales order as if the sales order was created by one of your customer service reps. So everything that's coming from the ERP is entered here, whether it's uh, payment information, shipping information, um, uh, the, the, the locations, everything is as you would expect it, um, as if it were manually entered from a customer service rep. From here, I'm going to go ahead and create the shipment. And then we'll quickly go ahead and process the order. So there's um, What I want to point out is as we go through the steps of uh, processing this order inside the ERP, this is sending more push notifications back to the e-commerce system and it's letting it, it's giving it an update about the status of the order. Now let's go in and check. Yeah, see here's the pending shipping. Again, I'm just gonna go ahead and force that through. So as the customer, this guy, Travis, I'm going to go back and we're going to look in my account. And you can see here that the item is shipped. Now I have items down here. See, these are awaiting fulfillment. I haven't gone through the process of shipping those out yet. But every time, um, uh, and this again, it's all configurable. It depends on what's important for your business. But every uh, step of the way, you could configure the system to send a notification to the customer. So maybe your order begins the processing. Maybe your order is boxed up. Maybe your order has been shipped out with the truck. Each of those different steps could be a status update here on the website, which in turn could be a email notification. Or it could be a text message, whatever is appropriate for your business. Um, okay, so as far as the actual integration, a couple of things I talked about customer specific pricing. We can also manage um, if if you're I talked a lot about b two b e commerce and um, the system that we've built applies to b two c as well we're We're working with some b two c customers, and some of the important things for b two c customers are supporting coupon codes and uh, gift cards. We have features for um, um, supporting um, both of those as well. Uh, returns, obviously, is a very important topic. Um, for returns, you can initiate returns on the e-commerce site, um, but we 
generally recommend managing the returns inside of the ERP, but uh, that topic can also be addressed um, in, a, in a pretty straightforward manner. So um, in addition to the customers that are selling directly to B2C and directly B2B, we have customers that we call hybrid customers that maybe their typical background is in B2B, but they've found that consumers appreciate the ability to buy their products online as well. Well, the nice thing about Big Commerce is that Big Commerce's system is built to support both of those customer types. And you can actually alter the customer experience based on the type of customer that they, <clears throat> excuse me, that they are. Um, so we do have, usually when you talk with a hybrid customer, um, typically 90% of their business is in either B2B or B2C. And then the other 10% is in the other, um, uh, it's in the other B2B or B2C fraction. But um, with this system, we're definitely marketing to both of those types of customers and, and um, we've covered all the bases for their types of businesses. Now, if we go through and look at all the different configuration settings, I won't get too far into the weeds here, but uh, there's a few other things I wanted to point out. As uh, Seth pointed out earlier, right now we're building an integration to Big Commerce. It's a native integration. It comes with the Commerce Edition. Um, the connector that we've built, it has endpoints that make it possible to connect it to other e-commerce platforms. Um, there's definitely conversation about that. And at Acumatica, um, additionally, our uh, partners like SWK, they have the ability to use the connector to connect it to other um, e-commerce platforms as well. Um, so in this case, I'm on the window where we would connect a store. In this case, I'm just choosing the type of connector, in this case, Big Commerce. And um, you can either pull up a specific store or you could add additional stores. We've talked to customers that maybe they have one warehouse of products, but they have 30 different audiences and they need 30 different e-commerce stores. Well, with the system, you can actually connect to as many e-commerce stores as you like. Once you have one of the stores set up, you can enable which entities are important to you. It's usually all of them, but your customers, categories, stock items, all of these just get turned on. And you can also tell the system if you want the real-time sync to sync immediately, or if you just want the real-time sync to pull the information into the ERP, but you have to manually push it into the database. And then you, you also have the ability to set up these default settings. Um, default settings are essentially um, you're telling the system how to handle uh, specific data points when they're passing back and forth between the two systems. An example of that is the customer class. So imagine a user lands on your website and they register for an account. Well, their account is going to flow into the ERP. And what we're doing here is we're creating this internet customer class and we're telling the system every time big commerce creates a customer, assign them to this class as you push them into the ERP. And you can do those same things with the, the different numberings. Um, you can also associate the correct payment methods with the different payment types that you would use on the e-commerce site. Um, May, if it's important to your business, you could accept orders from guest customers. And again, you would want to tell the system which uh, customer account to associate those orders with in the ERP. So lots of different settings. Um, the last thing I'll point out here is the inventory handling. Um, I showed you before that inventory will flow over to the e-commerce site. And I was able to show you those numbers, the 4,900 you know, whatever the inventory level was on the camera. Obviously, not everyone wants to do that. So you have the ability to control inventory any way you like. If you want to show inventory levels, you can. If you want to not show inventory levels, but as soon as the inventory reaches a certain level, maybe it gets to a low level, like there's only 10 items left, you could tell the system, just turn this page off. Don't, you know, on big commerce, don't show this to the customers any longer. You have the ability to control those kinds of things. And of course, if you want to take back orders, you could just show the item, you know, as long as you like. 
And then the last thing here is the, the, um, the warehouses. You can connect your inventory to one warehouse. You can connect it to all of your warehouses. You get to choose the warehouses. This has, this has a multi-warehouse uh, configurations. Um, now, with the entities, the really nice thing here, out of the box, um, we've selected a handful of fields that will pass data back and forth between the two systems. For instance, uh, with your stock item, uh, the, the, as I mentioned before, the title, the price, the images, and the description will flow from the ERP into the e-commerce system. But maybe that's not appropriate for your business. Let's say, for instance, the description, um, you have a marketing team that would, that would prefer to manage the description inside of big commerce. So they don't want it to come from the ERP. In that case, they can come into the entities uh, area where they can control the entities and the fields that are flowing back and forth. They can pull up the stock item and they can control the fields and how they flow between the two systems. And you can also do things like set up the, um, uh, set up different items to be bi-directional or only import export. Um, you can set up this, the sync immediately settings. So you have a lot of control. A good, um, a good example of this uh, that I get pretty often from prospects is that, especially in the B2B world, there's a lot of times when they'll have custom fields on their, um, on their items. And they want to make sure that those custom fields, which they know are, it's very important information for their customers. So they want to make sure that they'll be able to expose that information to the e-commerce site and display it on the product page. And um, the answer is yes, you can do that. And it doesn't require a developer. Um, it just requires a few steps on this, uh, on this window here, where you would add your custom field to your item uh, window. It would basically get exposed to the data points and it would have an endpoint that you could uh, refer to here and then you would set up a custom field inside of big commerce and you would just map the two together um, here and the information would um, start flowing immediately the next time you sync your products um, and we have customers that are doing that for their uh, items and also their customer records and you know they're using it for a lot of different things um, the data resync area, this is where you can, you can force um, data to flow back and forth between the systems. You can uh, do that incrementally, or you could do a full push or pull, or you could just pull up um, or push information that has been failed or pending. Um, this is a window that gets used a lot whenever you're first setting up a database. For instance, if you're adding all of your stock items to the e-commerce system for the first time, you would do a full uh, stock item push. And you also have your sync status area where you can see all of the different uh, fields that have passed back and forth and all the information about those fields. So every time a data point flows from one system to the next, it gets recorded in the sync status page. And notice too that the, um, the error messages here, they give you human readable messages. So anyone should be able to read this message and at least know where they know they need to go and look to see you know, what's gone wrong. In this case, it looks like that laptop that I added, the inventory um, wasn't synchronized properly. So there's something that needs to be looked at there, okay? Obviously, a lot of this is just added for testing and demo purposes. Um, now, everything else, the substitutes list and the connector preferences, these are just um, uh, windows that get set up when you're initially uh, configuring the two systems. But then the last thing I want to show you is the dashboard. Now, the dashboard that we have here, it's really just to get the point across. But, um, you know, I could imagine a, a, an e-commerce customer Maybe this is the window that they log into every day. You know, when, when they sit down with their cup of coffee and they're getting started for the day, they pull up this dashboard and we give them a really quick glimpse into everything that's going on at the business. And obviously this dashboard is configurable however you would like it to be. So we've, we've just thrown in some, um, you know, colorful features that, uh, and graphs that kind of help the, the page stand out. But, if there was information that was important 
to you or um, your business, you could obviously display it here on this page as well. And um, it's just a simple uh, configuration with the design tools. Um, so that's that's everything as far as the commerce edition. Um, I, obviously, it goes deeper than this, but that's typically the universal information that's helpful for most people. And um, beyond this, I'm happy to answer any any questions that anyone has. Thanks so much, Josh. That was great. Um, yeah, not not a problem. So I think you guys, hopefully, you guys can see kind of what what I was talking about, just um, as far as it's you know they've done a lot of good work on this integration and it's very configurable uh, without needing a, a programmer like uh, like Josh said. Um, but with that said, is there um, is there any questions that we can can answer for you guys as we finish up this webinar? So um, Seth and Josh, we do have one question that came in. It is, is the Commerce Edition available in the Small Business Acumatica license? Yeah, that's a great question. It is. Yes, indeed. Um, it's also, um, I know some people have asked, do I have to have the Commerce Edition? So basically, if you have the Manufacturing Edition or the Field Services Edition, you can add the connector uh, as an add-on module. If you were um, in the Advanced Financials or the Distribution Edition, you would go up to the Commerce Edition, which upgrade to the Commerce Edition, which would then, um, you know, provide all this functionality for you. Great, thank you. Um, if anyone else has any questions, uh, feel free to type them into your question section in your GoToWebinar pod. So we'll give it a couple more seconds to see if anything else comes in. And in the meantime, um, let's see here. Oh, we do have one question that's come in. How does a PM, PIM fit into this model um, WRT product attribute data? So I said a lot of stuff that I don't personally quite understand. <laughs> um, I'm assuming that you guys have a better understanding of what PIM and WRT product attribute data is referring to. Yeah, so um, a, a PIM could fit within this model uh, pretty easily. So there's several different PIMs. Um, well, for, first, for, for those that aren't aware, uh, PIM stands for Product Information Management. Um, and the other thing that came up, R2, what, what was it, Helen? Uh, WRT. WRT. That's something I'm not familiar with. But, with but I can talk to, about a PIM. what it means. With, oh, so, with yeah. respect to. That's Got just it. I was lingo playing, that I was I trying to find technology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so uh, with respect to attributes, okay, that's a great question. So PIM stands for Product Information Management, and a PIM is, it would be a completely separate database where you could manage all of your product information. Um, typically, uh, manufacturers use PIMs to manage uh, the entire life cycle of the product's information. So from the very beginnings of the product uh, being uh, conceptualized, clear through the product being, you know, loved by customers, you know, for years. It's it's the one place that you can go and find all the content about that product. And you're right, there are a lot of customers, especially in the manufacturing world, that want to use a PIM to manage their content rather than the ERP. Now, I'll, I'll the first thing I'll say is um, a PIM is not necessarily required if you don't require the the um, um, the power of a PIM, okay? So you can, you, obviously you can take the ERP and you can extend it to have multiple fields for your products or you can, you know, you can add uh, documents to it or whatever it may be. And from the ERP, you can connect that to big commerce. But if a PIM is important to you, that's not a problem either. Um, we would wanna work with you and talk through how the PIM is being used for your business. Maybe the PIM um, or I guess better example, maybe the ERP is housing the basics of your product information, like simply just a SKU, a title, and a price. And then that connects to the PIM, and the PIM is where uh, all the other content is housed about the product, which is typically a pretty large amount of information. And then maybe the PIM connects to big commerce. 
And um, so the ERP may send all of that information through the PEM, or maybe the ERP sends some information to the e-commerce system and the rest of the information through the PEM. We really have to work with you to figure out the best way to do that. But there are PEMs like Jasper, for instance, that both um, Big Commerce and Acumatica have integrations to. Um, there's other there's other PEMs uh, like Salsify that uh, we've had conversations with, and um, yeah, building out those integrations is, it, it comes up pretty often, and it's definitely a realistic task. I know uh, Big Commerce has some uh, case studies of people, of companies using PIMs like uh, the Skull Candies um, headphones. I believe they use PIMs. Yeah. In Big Commerce. Good point. Yeah. Um, and then we do have one more question that's come in. Does Acumatica plan to add integrations to other shopping carts in the future? Josh, I'll let you uh, handle that one since you're the senior product yeah so so we um i mean we definitely have conversations about this i think that our next step would be to build an integration to shopify um using the the connector that we've built um like i mentioned before the the connector that we've built is built in such a way that um it can be used to connect to these other uh, e-commerce platforms pretty quickly. We'll get you about 50% of the way there with the connector that we have. Um, so any modern e-commerce platform could be integrated uh, to the system. From our perspective, um, Shopify seems like the next best bet. Um, Magento is obviously a very powerful e-commerce platform, um, but for our, uh, our, our typical customer, um, it's not, it, it, it typically ends up not being a great fit for them because they like to have more control over things. Um, Magento comes in real handy if you have a department that can manage it. If you're um, uh, an Acumatica customer that, um, you, a, a lot of our customers are like do-it-yourself customers where they, um, they, they may have people that are wearing multiple hats and um, they're not spending their days thinking about e-commerce and HTML and and um, and how to build out websites. Maybe it's just a task that they're responsible for in addition to many other things. In that case, um, Magento doesn't seem to be a good fit for those kinds of customers. Um, uh, but a system like Big Commerce, it's it's and Shopify. In fact, um, it's so intuitive that. You know, I feel like I can train just about anybody to to learn how to use and work with big commerce and Shopify. Um, and for that reason, it just seems like it's a better fit for our customer type. Now, obviously, there's a lot of Acumatica customers that are connected to Magento and using Magento. Um, but if you look at those um, businesses, the the thing that they have in common is that they have people. They either have people on staff that are managing their Magento site and managing all the content um, and using the actual Magento tool, or they have a digital agency that they're working with that does that work for them. Great, thank you, Josh. Um, so while we wait for any other questions to come in, we do want to announce our winner of the Google, Google Home Mini Smart Speaker. So I'm going to randomize a number and then we will announce the winner. Mark Linder. So, Mark, All right. if you're here, if you want to confirm your attendance, um, we will be in touch with you after the webinar um, to get the best mailing address for you. We'll make sure that that gets over to you. Oh, oh there he is. He raised his hand. Sounds good, Mark. Um, so, if any other questions come in, feel free to type them in now. Um, if something comes up later on, you can always reach out to the um, marketing team at SWK. You'll get that email address in with a recording tomorrow, and then we will make sure that it gets directed to the right people to get that answered for you. So let's see. Of course, if you have my email, uh, so Seth, you can email me as well. Absolutely, yes. Um, if you have a direct email address, feel free to reach out to that person. So nothing new has come in, so we just want to thank everyone for spending time on their busy day to attend the webinar. I think this had some really awesome information from Josh and Seth. So thank you both 
for um, your diligent presentation and providing us with such great information. And thank you, Josh, for battling the flu to be here today. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, I, I noticed I stumbled over a few words there, but it all worked out. So well, thanks for having me. Flu. Really <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah. Right. Thanks, guys. Exactly. Thank you. Bye. Right, thank you. Thank you, guys. I see you.